if you have one this morning, Matthew chapter number 1 and Luke chapter number 1. <clears throat> we'll be several places as we go through, and um, the, the uh, thought is probably coming across your mind right now. This, uh, uh, this time of year, we're going to get into some Christmas messages, and, um, and not really. We're going to look at a Christmas passages. Uh, but um, uh, I guess it's a Christmas message because it's all about Christ, right? Yes. Amen. And in all things, he might have the preeminence. I think this message this morning is exactly that. It gives him the preeminence, and we want to do that, certainly. But we will look at some, um, some Christmas passages, what we would think of, Matthew chapter number 1, and then we'll look over in Luke chapter number 1, and um, we'll go through this this morning. So thank you for being in church. Thank you for looking in your Bible, opening it. Thank you for having it this morning. And let's uh, begin to read in Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 18. The Bible says, Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as Mary or when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded privately or to put her away privately but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him, his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Let's uh, pray together this morning, and we'll get started. Father, we give we just thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in a place where we can freely worship, freely exercise the gifts of our uh, of your Holy Spirit upon us to freely come together and congregationally sing together and open up a Bible which are, we are freely uh, free to use and to preach from yes. and to read from this morning. We thank you for that. We thank you for those that have taken advantage of those great liberties this morning and have been found in a place of worship like this that have put themselves under the sound preaching of the Word of God. I pray, Lord, that you would remove any obstacles, anything that uh, um, would distract us from, um, from you and from your glory this morning. I pray that you would help me as, um, you, as I preach the Word that you've laid on my heart. I pray that you would help me to be guided, uh, to have clarity, and to say only that which you ought me to say. I know that in and of myself I can mess everything up that you want to do in a heart, and I pray that I would not be that distraction this morning. Lord, I do pray that you would bless, uh, um, bless this service, manifest thyself in a great way. If there be a soul that does not know Christ today as their Savior, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation, whether in this room, in the Spanish ministry, or in children's church this morning. And then, Lord, I pray for those who could not be here, desire to be so. I know that several are sick and out, and just pray that you put your hand of protection and healing upon each of them. We thank you and praise you for that as well. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I suppose that most of us are very familiar with this passage here in Matthew chapter number 1. As we said a moment ago, uh, commonly a, a um, Christmas passage of Scripture. We'll look here in just a moment at, over in Luke. As a matter of fact, we'll just go ahead and, and turn over there to Luke and chapter number 1 as well. And we'll find the account of the angel meeting with Mary. As a matter of fact, I believe, I think, that uh, the account that is given of the angel meeting with Mary happens prior to uh, what we just read there in Matthew chapter number 1. And the reason for that, I think, is because it would seem that the things that um, were plaguing Joseph, uh, that were heavy upon his heart and mind, were things that he was already aware of. And how would he be made aware of them? 
had not Mary already come and spoken with him, and he was contemplating those things and worrisome. And if you would, the Bible would say, fear not, not fear not the angel, but rather fear not the things that you're thinking about. Fear not the consequences of those. That might be a separate message altogether. But let's look here in Luke chapter number 1, and beginning in verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And and again, we'll point out that she was not necessarily troubled at the sight of the angel. I find that remarkable. If I woke up in the middle of the night and there was an angel standing at the foot of my bed, I would be afraid of the angel at the foot of my bed. And I suppose most of us would. Yet, the Bible would not say that she was troubled at the sight of the angel. Rather, she was troubled at the things that he would say to her. Now, that's not the message this morning, but the things that he would say unto her would be... Uh, Mary, you are highly favored, and you're going to conceive and bear a child. And her being a virgin, not being a, not being married yet, I think in, in and of herself, she realized, like, how can that be? I don't want to be in a, a circumstance, a situation that the world would look at and, and, and think of me as doing wrong or doing evil. I think uh, Mary is a very young girl, but up until this point of her life, she has lived as devout as she possibly can. Certainly she had been influenced by her cousin Elizabeth, whose husband was a priest, and certainly she was a devout and, and a gracious young lady that God would place such great favor. By the way, that's a whole separate message. I better not get into that this morning. Uh, but, uh, but put some such favor and blessing upon her. And she was fearful of those things. But let's continue on. She cast in her mind what manner, manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And I want us to notice here that when the angel came to Mary, she did the same, or he did rather the same thing that he would later do with Joseph when the angel came and spoke with Joseph. And that was, that was obviously to instruct them and let them know what this circumstance was that, that, um, that, that, uh, that Mary would conceive of the Holy Spirit. This would be a miracle uh, event, a miracle of birth. This would be a special child then, obviously. He would be uh, the son of the highest. He is the son of God. And, and that is pointed out to them. And then the second reason, I think, for the visit was to... Uh, to help them understand it to the point that they would not be fearful of what the world might think or what God might think of them. And uh, not be fearful of the consequences of that. And, and again, as I said a moment ago, that's uh, maybe a whole separate message. But then the third reason I think uh, we clearly see in our Bibles is that of this, that the angel comes and speaks with Mary, and then later will come and speak with Joseph. We don't know how much later, may have been the same night but comes and speaks with Joseph and gives them the, both the same instruction, and that is this. There is a name that thou shalt name this child, and that name is the name Jesus. Amen. Boy, I think of this morning, there is no sweeter name upon this earth Amen. than the name of Jesus. And there have been many names that I have loved to hear, but never has there been a name so dear as is in this heart of mine, right? It goes on, the, the sweet, sweet name of Jesus. And the boy, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. I think Amen. this morning, I want us to just maybe question and th think about this in the next few moments. And what is it about a name? You know, you think about the name Jesus, by the way, we think of it in terms of, of our culture today and being uh, Westerners in America. We don't have a lot of people named Jesus. As a matter of fact, as close as we get is the Spanish name Jesus, uh, and um, and so we see that as a common name. Uh, it seems like that. Would you agree with that, Miss Sophie? 
that that would be a common name south of the border, right? Uh, would be Jesus, and that would be. But but here in American culture, and so we look at the name Jesus, and we think, well, there's only one Jesus. And by the way, there is only one Jesus, but but there's only one to be named Jesus. How dare anybody? And I think our mindset is, how dare anybody else be named Jesus, right? But you understand that in when in, when Jesus is born in the Bible times, the name Jesus is a common regular name that is used all the time. It would be na like the name Bill or Bob or or, um, or or whatever. It would be like the name John today. It was just a common name. Of course, the name John, by the way, was a common name as well for them. But the name Jesus was a common name. But yet the angel is very specific with both Mary and later with Joseph when he says there in verse number, verse number 31 here in Luke, he says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. No other name. Don't think about some other name. Boy, we uh, uh, children today, especially in our culture, parents will spend a lot of time thinking about the name. Put a lot of investment, as, as in outright Miss Catherine, right? A lot of investment, a lot of research. What does the name mean? Some, some you just say, boy, I'm going to name my kids this because I like the sound of it. It sounds good. Uh, but some people will invest and invest their time and begin to narrow down the name. I think about the name of the church, kind of a unique name, Cactus Point Baptist Church. As a matter of fact, it's unique enough that there is not another one in the country. And that was done on purpose. A lot of research, a lot of thinking. And I, uh, after starting the last church we started, Pleasant Valley Baptist Church, we started in Colonia, California because it was in the Pleasant Valley. But then we soon found out that there was a Pleasant Valley Christian Center in the same town. Now, it's a small town. I should have known that before we started there. But then I found out there are several Pleasant Valley Baptist churches throughout California. And I thought, you know what? When we start this church, I don't want that mistake. I don't want to knock on a door and somebody go, well, I already go there. And I'm looking at them going, no, you don't go to a church. I don't want to make that mistake. And so I thought, I want to, I want to name the church something that is... Something that is fitting of the geographical location, first of all, cactus, right? Mm -hmm. I want to name it something that makes sense in our geographical location. And, um, and, and I would have been just as fine to call it Levine Baptist Church, but there already was a Levine Baptist Church, so I don't <laughs> want to do that. Uh, but I wanted something strategic about the location, and then I wanted it to be unique enough to where if somebody was in the state of Arizona and they looked up Cactus Point Baptist Church, they would not pull up six different churches and go, now, which one was I looking for mm -hmm. uh, this morning? They would know, and so they would be able to find it. I, I had no idea that we were the only in the country, but it does make sense to me now. Anyways, <laughs> there's something in a name, amen? Amen. And now some people will choose a name for their child, just, uh, just I like this name. Some will do it uh, based on sentimental values. Sentimental, and they'll they'll name their children after somebody else, maybe after uh, the father or or a grandparent. As a matter of fact, my name is uh, Robert. I got my first name apparently from one of my uncles, who I have no relationship with. But at the time, uh, my parents wanted to name me Robert, and I I would be and, and anyways I would be fine with any name. I really don't care. You call me whatever you want, uh, as long as I'm not late for dinner, right? And uh, I have a Bible name now because I shortened it to Rob. And the Bible says, Rob, not the poor. And so I, I now have a Bible name. Uh, but, but anyway, some of us, you, you might have been named after somebody. My, my brother, my older brother David, named uh, his youngest son, Jonathan Robert. Uh, the middle name was named after me. And I thought... Uh, and to him, that was a big deal. To me, I'm like, who cares? Why would you name your kid Robert? Didn't we? Uh, but, um, so sometimes there's that, that reason. Uh, but, but, but sometimes people will dive in a lot deeper, and there's a reason. But, but you know, it, I just find that I say all that to say this. It's very intriguing that the angel would come down directed of God and say specifically to Mary, you will name your child Jesus. You don't need to think about it. You don't need to research it. You, didn't need, you don't need to look in the family and find out who else is Jesus. Uh, you don't need to wonder about that. His name will be Jesus. And then when the angel comes to Joseph back there in Matthew, we find his name will be Jesus. How specific and, and, um, and, and real particular the Holy Spirit was, the angel in this case, and on behalf of God, was in saying this will be his name. That name will be Jesus. Well, you know, the name Jesus speaks about his, his human nature, if you would, his is um, uh, taking upon him the form of a serpent, but, but it is the name that means Savior. As a matter of fact, let's look back here, uh, if you would, in Matthew chapter number 1. Don't lose your... Well, it's fine if you leave Luke chapter 1, but look back here in Matthew chapter number 1. 
And uh, the Bible says there is God is giving to Joseph the instructions in verse 21. He says, And she shall bring forth a son. Now shall call his name Jesus. Wait, hold on, angel. I'm, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's hard to understand that Mary's going to have a child, but 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 I really like this name. I think she's going to want this name. No, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. His name will be Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. The very name Jesus is the Old Testament. By the way, the Greek name is Jesus. The Hebrew name would be uh, Yeshua or Joshua. It's the name Joshua, which means Savior. So we do... After all, have some in our country that share a name with Jesus, right? Their names are Joshua, but the name is, is Joshua or Yeshua. And he says specifically because of his purpose. His purpose will be to save sinful men. To save his people from their yeah. sins. To save the Gentiles. After all, there is no name under heaven given among men. No other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Amen. It's the name of Jesus. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Right? It's upon his name. It's, there is no other name. And so I think about the name of Jesus and it would speak about the reason the Holy Spirit was so particular. And the reason the angel would come down and be so particular about what his name would be. And by the way, the reason Jesus himself had already determined this will be my name when I come to this earth. The reason was because of his purpose, and his purpose was to save men from uh, save uh, <coughs> sinners from from damnation and save them unto salvation. So we see the purpose that was given. But notice as well, not only his purpose, his position is is referred to as well as we continue on here in verse twenty one. Speaks about his purpose. His name shall be Jesus. Right. His purpose on this earth is that he stooped and came among men that he. That he did it to say, Jesus would say, I can't, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which was lost. And so that's his purpose. But notice, as we continue on, verse 22, he says, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, I thought his name was Jesus. Yes, but his name is specific because of his Position And what is his position? Well, he is Emmanuel. He is, as being interpreted, God with us. When Jesus walked this earth, it was not just any man that walked this earth. Of course, we know that's why he would be born of a virgin. He did not contain the blood of men. He Amen. contained the blood of his yeah. father, which one day would be shed for the anointing of your sin and for my that's sin. That's right. And his position is as God, would you look back there and as it's quoted here in Isaiah, let's go back to Isaiah if you would, Isaiah chapter number 7. That is what Matthew is quoting here, the angel is quoting it. And so Matthew chapter number 7 if you would, and notice here in verse number 14, Matthew chapter, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, he says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold a virgin shall conceive. <coughs> Very son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Which we find out is God with us. <clears throat> Jesus was not just any man. He's the, he's the God man. He's the one that came to this earth, born of, born of a virgin, and lived a sinless life, a perfect life. And he could go to the cross and bear the sins of the world and take upon it. He is God in the flesh. And so we see not only is his name very specific because of his purpose, but also because of his position. I want us to think back, if you would, and, and we'll look back real quick in Matthew, and then we'll turn a couple other places and, and, and kind of start heading a home stretch. But notice back in Matthew, if you would, and, uh, and, and we'll just focus on this part uh, and, rather than go back to Luke. But notice here in Matthew, he says in verse 21, And she shall bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He gives that other instruction, right? We just, just spoke about uh, how his name would be Emmanuel. But notice here, verse 24, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the Lord, as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. He took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he, Joseph, <clears throat> called his name Jesus. We see, we see the uh, uh, the purpose. So, what's the purpose of his name? It was that he would be savior. So, his name would be savior is among us. That he, his position, that he is Emmanuel. But then we see 
the acceptance of that, and we see the reception, if you would, or the, uh, the, 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 the receiving of that. And Joseph, along with Mary, would say, his name is Jesus. I think back, we find the only other case that I can think of right here in the New Testament is that of John. John was very specific too when God came and spoke with, uh, 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 with, uh, with, with his parents and said, you will name him John and, and it, it'll be a specific name. And why? Well, I mean, the, God has a reason. There's, there's something in the name. There's something that means it. Would you go, if you would, to I, I, I'm sorry, Psalm chapter number 8. Psalm chapter number 8. You okay this morning? Amen. We're not going to preach long. Uh, <clears throat> We have some that are sick. I, I have avoided all of you this morning. I've done my best to avoid you because I can feel the top of my throat touching the bottom of my throat, and I feel like I'm gurgly and all that. And so I'm trying to move right along this morning, but I think it's important for us to be reminded of there's something about that name. Notice here in Psalm chapter number 8, he says, Our Lord, our Lord, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You say, wait a minute, isn't this thousands of years before Jesus is born? Yeah, but his name is his name. Amen. His name is I Am, and, and all the other names that are given to the Father. He says, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. That thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, and the moon, those stars, uh, which thou hast ordained what, ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him. That son of man is a reference to the son of, the son of God. It's talking about Jesus being born among, among men, and that he would be called the son of man. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. What do you mean? Jesus was made a little lower than the angels? Yes, because he took upon him the form of a servant was made in the likeness of man. The writer of Hebrews would later speak about this very case and how he was made a little lower than the angels. Yet he was their creator. Notice as he continues on, he says in verse 6, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. One day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of the Father. He says, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O oh, Lord, our Lord. I like how the psalmist finishes off with how he starts. He says, O oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Well, I think about it, and this is not the message this morning. That's not the intent of the message. But as we enter Christmas season, don't get rid of Christ out of Christmas. Amen. Amen. Just tell people Merry Christmas. It's all about Christ. Everything is all about Him anyway. The whole earth is created for His glory. As a matter of fact, since you brought it up, the Bible says, For all things were created by Him, whether in heaven or in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him. And for, for, him. for him, they're all, everything is for him. Amen. Hey, with this Christmas season, you keep Christ in Christmas because Christmas is all about him. But by the way, January 1st is all about him too. Yeah. January 2nd will be all about him. Your work, your job is all about him. Your family is all about him. The church is all about him. Why? Because in all things, he might have the preeminence. And so, you know, what's in a name? I mean, his name is excellent above all the earth. And I like the way the psalmist finishes there. I think about the name of Jesus. You realize that I wrote a few things down. You realize that his name has been blessed. It has been cursed. It has been praised. And it has been blasphemed. It has been exalted. And it has been excommunicated. It has been spoken in temples and in the slums of the city's worst neighborhoods. It has been spoken in chambers of princes and in the cells of prisoners. Mm -hmm. It is the name that is, and that is heard in the hustle of cities and in the hush of the countryside. It has changed the lives of presidents and peasants, uh, the courageous and the cowardly, the mean and the meek. It is the name of yeah. Jesus. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the only name that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess mm -hmm. that Jesus yeah. Christ is Lord. Think about the name, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Would you consider the name of Jesus? And then all the names that fall under his name, Jesus. I'll give a few to you. He is the advocate. Amen. What does that mean? He advocates on our behalf. 
He is the Almighty. Mm -hmm. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the Amen. He is the Apostle of our profession. Mm -hmm. He is the Arm of the Lord. He is the Author and Finisher mm -hmm. of our faith. He is the Author of Eternal Salvation. He is the Beginning and the End. He's the Beloved Son. He's the Blessed and Only Potentate. Amen. He is the branch and the bread of life. He is the captain of salvation, the chief shepherd, and the Christ of God. He Amen. is the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, and the creator. We just Amen. talked about that. He is the day spring and deliverer. He is desired of all nations. He is the door. And by the way, the only door. That's right. Amen. He is the desired of all nations. I've said that already. He is the elect of God. He is everlasting Father. He is the faithful witness. He's the first and the last. He's the first begotten. Amen. He is the forerunner and the glory of the Lord. Would you consider that for a moment? We beheld His glory and as a, as the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. The only reason we can experience the glory of God is ultimately because Jesus Christ Amen. came to this earth. Sure, the heavens declare the glories we just read, but Jesus is the glory Amen. of the Lord. Not only is He the glory of the Lord, He is God. He is God blessed. He is the good shepherd. He's the governor, the great high priest. Hey, we don't have to worry about going to a priest asking forgiveness of sins because we have access boldly to enter the throne room of grace. Amen. Why? Because our great high priest sits at yes, the right sir. hand throne of the majesty Amen. of God. He is the great high priest. He is the head of the church. He's heir of all things. He's the holy child, the holy one, the holy one of God, the holy one of Israel. He is the horn of salvation. I like this one. He is I am. Amen. Just like God said to Moses, you tell him, I am sent you. And uh, he is the I am. He is the image of God. He is Emmanuel, Jehovah, and he is Jesus. We yes, talked about sir. that this morning. Amen. And he is Jesus of Nazareth. Now, I've been to Nazareth. He is Jesus of Nazareth. He's the judge of Israel. He is the just one. He is king. I like this. He is the king of the ages. Amen. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of kings. He is the king of saints. He's the lawgiver. You wonder about, he didn't come to destroy the law, he came to fulfill it. He's the one that gave the law. Amen. He is the lawgiver. He is the lamb. He's the lamb of God, right? Which taketh away the sins of the world, John the Baptist would say. He is life. He is the light of the world. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. I like that one. As I think about how in Revelation chapter number 5, you and I will bow before him. We'll wonder, as John said, who's worthy to open the seal of the book there. And behold, the line of the, the, line of the tribe of Judah, he have, uh, he have exalted, uh, uh, become worthy. And so he's the one that's worthy. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of glory. He's the Lord of lords. Amen. What does that mean, you might ask? Well, a Lord is a leader, and He is the leader of leaders. Yes. He's the Lord over them. The Lord is a master. He is the master of masters. Oh, Amen. Almighty, yep. So He is the Lord, our righteousness. He's a man of sorrows. And by the way, acquainted with grief. Yes. You and you're going through sorrows. He knows all about sorrow. He is a man of sorrows. He's the mediator, the messenger of the covenant. He is the Messiah. He is the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, Nazarene. He's the only begotten son. We talked about Amen. that in Sunday school this morning. He is our Passover. He is the prince of kings and the prince of life. He's the prince of peace. He is the prophet. There's been many prophets, preachers Amen. that proclaim the word of God, but he is the prophet. Right. He is the redeemer. Aren't you glad that he redeemed yeah, you? You're yes, saved sir. this morning. You Amen. were bought back. And that was through His redemption. He is Redeemer. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the rock. Peter's not the rock. He is just a small throwable stone. Jesus is the rock. He is the root of David, the rose of Sharon, and Savior. He is the seed of woman. He is the shepherd of souls. He is Shiloh. He is the son of the blessed, the son of David, the son of God. He is the son of the highest, the son of man. The son of righteousness. He is the true light. Hey, there's many lights Amen. in the world. As a matter of fact, you and I are to let our light so shine among men, right. like before men, that they may see our good works and glorify the Father, right? But he is that true light. Amen. He is the true light and the true vine. He is the truth. 
He is the witness. He is the Word, and He is the Word of God. Those are only 101 names to hit, given to Him throughout the Bible. There are many more. But if you ask me, I think it's this our college course. We would say this is Jesus 101. This is just scratching the surface, just getting to the beginning. As a matter of fact, we're there. I don't know if you're still in Isaiah, but notice if you would, Isaiah chapter number 9. Isaiah, and we'll look over in Isaiah chapter number 9. There is something, all I'm saying this morning is there is something about that name. Amen. There is no other name on this earth. There's no other name whereby we must be saved. It is only His name. Uh, I need to get to Isaiah, pay attention here, but there, there's something special about His name. And then we think about all those other names give us a description and a personality about who He is. Notice here Isaiah chapter 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. I like this. Wonderful. All right, that's his name? No, no, that's just the beginning of it. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like when you get to Galatians in chapter number 5, and the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit, singular, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So is the fruit of the Spirit love? No, that's just a piece of it. That's just one-ninth of it. Mm. The Holy Spirit, we're walking in the Spirit. You'll see love, joy, peace, long-suffering, not just one or the other. You'll see it all. And here we go. He says that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Boy, what a name. As I named those 101 names, some of them were included right here in this passage. You realize they're not all different names of Him. They are Amen. all the name of Him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He is all those things. Yes. All to the hungry, He is the bread. Mm -hmm. To the thirsty, He is the water. He can do all those things at one time. Mm -hmm. To those that need laws, He is the lawgiver. To those that need peace, He is the Prince of Peace, right? He's all these things. When you're in trouble, He is your, he's your comforter. When, when somebody else is, is a arrogant pride, He is the one that brings humility. I mean, He does all these things at one time. There's no other name under heaven That's like right. that. No other name. Amen. No name causes anybody else to tremble like the name of Jesus. As we said a moment ago, I think of that you think presidents have bowed before him. Right. And when I say presidents, I also mean kings of the world. Mm. Yes. Those that are in leadership roles, they have bowed before him, but so did the prisoners in the cells. Yeah. And his name is spoken of in all of those different places. When you turn one last place in your Bible, we'll start closing this up. Look over, if you would, in Philippians chapter 2. Because it's here that we're reminded that one day, every knee should bow, right? And the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2, verse 6, we'll get to, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. Men found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him. Given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. You wonder if maybe Joseph went, why, why the name of Jesus? Do you understand, Joseph, one day every knee will bow before that name? You better name him Jesus. Amen. Mary says, why, why Jesus? I know they didn't question, because you imagine if they did, the angel would have looked and said, you better name him Jesus. Because <laughs> it's at that name that every knee should bow, that every tongue should confess, and so the Bible says, Wherefore God had also, also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, mm -hmm. to the glory of God the Father. You realize, and we understand this, there's a lot of different religions and unreligions and all that kind of stuff that call a lot of, a lot of different people that call different people their Lord. There can be only be one Lord. Amen. One day, the day is coming where everybody will confess that He is Lord. Right. Everybody will recognize and realize that. And you, we, we sit here this morning, if you're saved, if you're not, boy, I hope today you'll make it the day where you'll call Him Lord, Amen. where you'll call Him Savior, where you'll call Him Jesus, where He'll save you from your sin. But if you're saved this morning, we look at this and we go, praise God, we're doing this now. Right. Yes. 
Praise God, we can, we can look at Him as our Savior, as, as the God's Son, and we can see Him as, as our Lord of our life. But I wonder, is, this, does, this passage doesn't end there. Would you look, he says, every time she confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, verse 12. Wherefore, because of this, is what Paul says. Now because of that, Christian, because every knee should bow, because, because we're to have this mind, and, and because he had this mind of humility when he was deserving of everything, because of that, because one day we'll... We'll, we'll exalt Him and worship Him because of that. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Bible does not talk about working for your salvation Amen. or working toward your salvation. You are, but you are to work out your salvation. Right? We've talked about this before. If you go to the gym, I go to the gym five days a week and do power lifting. And if I go to the gym and lift weights, I am not working for muscles. I am working out the muscles that God has already put there. Right. If you didn't have a muscle, you know, we'll joke. I'll look at my, uh, my boys and particularly one of them that reminds <laughs> me of a kid I used to know very well and look in the mirror at, and uh, I look at him and I say, where are your muscles? But the reality is, I say, you don't have any muscles, but the reality is, yes, he does. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to walk out, walk mm -hmm. around, right? So we're not we're working for our salvation, but that which is already there, we are to work Amen. out, to exercise it, if you would. Yep. To, 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 it, to put it into practice. And so he says, now look, well, the day's coming where everything's back. So, make sure you work it out. For, verse 13, for it is God which worketh in you, both to do, uh, both to, his, uh, uh, worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're saved this morning, if you know Christ your Savior, you're trusting in that name. There's no other name under heaven that you've trusted. It's Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and Jesus Amen. Christ alone. Well, if that's the case this morning, you understand that one day every knee is going to bow and you say, well, I already do that. But do you? And if you bear the name of Jesus, and by the way, you and I bear his name. How is that? We bear the name in the name Christian. Mm -hmm. If you are a Christian, you are bearing his name. Mm -hmm. And if you and I are bearing his name, boy, we ought to be worthy of that name. <coughs> Paul would put it in chapter number 1. He would say here in verse number 27, he says to them, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel. What does that mean? Make sure your lifestyle is worthy of being saved in the gospel. He's not talking about working for your salvation, but because you're saved, make sure that everybody else sees a becoming lifestyle of your salvation, of the gospel. If you're going to represent the gospel, if you would, make sure that you're a good ambassador of it. Make sure that it's becoming of that. That's what he's saying. Now look, the day's coming where every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Paul says, are you doing that already? And because that day is coming, you make sure that you're living out and working out and exercising your salvation right now. Mm -hmm. That you're living the way he wants you to do. Why? Because you, I know he doesn't say this clearly, but we can surmise because you bear his name. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there is something about that name. Mm -hmm. The world may curse it, but you know you're supposed to glorify it. So your life should glorify. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed this morning.